Hey guys, welcome back to Carnal Dish. Today we're making buttermilk cider brine oven fried chicken sliders with roasted red pepper aioli, poblano and cabbage slaw, and crispy buttermilk onion straws. These little sandwiches are to die for and sure to make your game day party super lit. Everything can be made a day ahead so there's no stress when it's time to eat. I hope you're ready for something special. Let's get started. In a bowl, I have some chicken tenderloin. If you want to use chicken breasts, um, make sure that you pound them so that they're not as thick. And to that, I'm adding some granulated onion and plenty of it, some granulated garlic, some black pepper, some herb de Provence that I'm just squeezing between my fingers, and some smoked paprika, a good teaspoon or so. Last but not least, a big generous pinch of kosher salt. Keep in mind that this is only going to brine for about two hours. If you want to brine yours for longer than two hours, cut back on the salt. I'll show you how to do that on my blog. You're going to mix that all together with your tongs and we're going to add some apple cider. About a cup or so. So just pour some delicious, sweet, tangy apple cider right over your chicken. Then we're going to add some buttermilk. Mix everything together very well. Cover with plastic wrap and set it to the side. You can put this in the fridge or leave it on your counter if you're only browning for two hours or less. Now we can get started on the remaining components for these amazing little sandwiches. We're gonna make a roasted red pepper aioli. A traditional aioli is garlic, olive oil, egg yolks, and lemon juice. Mayo is a mix of egg and oil. So we're gonna cheat, <laughs> we're gonna use that as our base. The roasted red peppers are kinda briny, so we're also skipping the lemon juice, although you could add it if you wanted to. Our slaw that we're making later will have enough acidity, so I didn't wanna have too many acidic components. You wanna just pulse the ingredients together until they're combined. It's very simple and straightforward. After you've pulsed everything, you wanna make sure that you give it a taste. You should have a nice balance of creaminess and you should definitely taste the roasted red pepper. Add everything to a small bowl and add a little bit of smoked paprika, some finely minced red onion or shallot, that would be nice here too and some chopped up cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, you can use a different herb. Mix that all together. You're gonna wanna add a little bit of heat, so either black pepper or cayenne, which is what I'm gonna add here. And every after you've mixed everything up, just wrap it in plastic wrap and set it to the side. Put it in the refrigerator and let all the flavors marry. I'm slicing a yellow onion on my mandolin on the thinnest setting, breaking up the rings so that they're separated nicely. Put them in a bowl and cover them with buttermilk for at least 30 minutes or up to 24 hours. Like I said before, the great thing about this entire recipe is that everything can be made a day ahead. In a separate bowl, you're gonna add one cup of plain flour and a generous portion of your favorite pre-made seasoning blend. I'm using this one in particular. Mix that very well with the flour and when you're ready to dredge your buttermilk soaked onions, you want to make sure that you do just a few at a time so that you don't have a big clumpy mess. The moisture from the buttermilk can seep through and you don't want these to be all glued together. Arrange them on a parchment lined baking sheet, keeping them kind of separate so that they so that they don't glue together and meanwhile you should be heating your oil to about 350 and you're going to fry these in batches until they're golden brown it should take about three to four minutes um, and make sure you don't eat them all because i'm gonna tell you right now these are crack there's a big chance you may have quite a few onions left over which is fine you can store them in a ziploc bag or an airtight container they'll actually keep for a while so right here i'm just separating them while they're hot so that they don't stick together and I think I ate like a good handful of them, but don't tell anybody. Now we're making the slaw. I've already shredded some red cabbage very thinly on my mandolin. And now I'm using my julienne slicer on this large, thick carrot. <laughs> 
Combine them both in a bowl. Just mix them well with your hands. You don't need to pull out any new utensils or anything like that. You're gonna take um, a poblano and slice it in half. And I'm just shaving mine on the mandolin just because I'm lazy and I'm trying to make this go by a lot faster. But you're just gonna slice it into strips like this and then you're gonna dice it. And you're gonna add just a few splashes of rice wine vinegar and a pinch of salt and a couple tablespoons of honey. Mix that around very well. Taste it, see what you need to add. Um, you wanna just make sure there's a good balance of acidity and sweetness. I decided that mine needed just a touch more honey so I just put that in there. And next we're gonna add some freshness. So add a little bit of fresh chopped cilantro and you're basically done. Like it's pretty straightforward. Cover this with plastic wrap and let it hang in the fridge until you're ready to use it. I'm oven frying my chicken in a 60-40 mix of crushed plain cornflakes and seasoned panko breadcrumbs. It's a very tasty combination with guaranteed crunch. So take out all your aggression on the cornflakes and break them down as best you can. Set up a dredging station of plain flour, beaten eggs, and the cornflake breadcrumb mixture. So you're gonna take each chicken piece and pretty much let as much excess buttermilk run off as you can. Dip it into the flour, then dip that into the egg, and then dip that into the cornflake mixture. You wanna make sure that the coating sticks very well, so it's important that you press the crumbs into the chicken as best you can so that it really adheres. So don't be a punk about this. Next, you're going to drizzle just a little bit of olive oil over each piece of chicken just to help promote browning. And we're gonna stick this into a 425 degree oven for between 20 to 25 minutes. It'll really depend on the thickness of your chicken. Make sure you take its temperature. It should be 165 in the center. Look at my slider buns, aren't they cute? I'm so proud of them. I basically took the same dough from my no need bread recipe and just made eight rolls instead of one big loaf and sprinkled them with some seeds. Right here, I'm just spreading a very thin layer of mayo so that they can be toasted. It's an old restaurant trick. My chicken is done, it's 165. I'm gonna let that chill out while I toast the buns. They're so soft and pillowy. I'm just looking for them to develop some color around the edges and make sure that they're nice and toasted. We finally get to eat, you guys. So go ahead and assemble your sandwiches. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it, but I just think it's better. Um, go ahead and you know put some of that delicious roasted red pepper, mayo, aioli, whatever you wanna call it, down on the bread, pile it high with the slaw, Follow up with the crunchy, crispy, sweet, and spicy onions that you fried. You're not gonna believe that you made something so delicious. It is the best sandwich, or one of the best sandwiches you'll ever make. If you make the bread, it'll make it even better. So I hope you enjoy these as much as I did, and I hope you have a great Super Bowl party. See you guys later, bye. I'm so excited. Y'all, I really piss myself off when I do this. Like, food should just, it just shouldn't be this good. Let me tell you something. Baking your own bread for anything makes whatever you're about to eat that much better. Do I have food in my teeth? That chicken is delicious. That slaw brings like a good amount of heat and acidity and crunch and like a much needed freshness. And the crispy onions, bitch. Man, look. You make this for like a Super Bowl party or any kind of party, people are gonna like wanna sleep with you. Like. I would totally do me right now. It's so good. 
And to be honest with you, like, it's kind of a big ass slider. <laughs> But if you think I'm not going to eat this other half, then you don't know me that well. <laughs> you kind of just can't worry about, oh, do I look cute eating this? You got to go for it, okay? You just got to pick it up and deep throat the whole sandwich. Thug life. Mm, mm, mm. Lord have mercy. That is ridiculous. Fellas, make this for your lady. She might forgive you for returning her car with no gas. Might. Why are you so delicious? God damn. Damn, I'm sad that's over. It's gone. <laughs> she make you wanna lick the play.